Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. It's uh, Monday the 13th and it is 6.30 p.m. <clears throat> and first up on our agenda, we've got our minutes from June 29th, 2020. Just go over those. We have a motion on those. Motion. I'll second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, three to zero on the minutes. All right, and then uh, next up is our bi-weekly COVID-19 state of emergency update. And oh, I see Lori oh, on camera now, oh, hey. Oh, Mr. Hey, Go ahead. Yes. So did we do the regular Schleckman minutes and the uh, Riverside Park public meeting minutes? No, um, we did the regular ones, that's true. There are two, let's do, let's do the um, Riverside Park one too from the public meeting. Right, okay. as that was a public hearing, right? Right. right. Oh, yep. motion. I'll second that motion. Again, this is for the Riverside Park public portion of our meeting. The second half of that, yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There we go. Now we got both of them down there. Okay. And um, I think I'm also going to, because we've got Lori on too, and, and it really kind of ties in, but we've got one of the, one of the other items on our agenda is um, return of college students. So why don't we kind of wrap that all up because it's really closely connected. We can do that right with this once you're done, Lori. Sure. Um, I don't have an update. I met with our new um, MEMA representative and that was Friday afternoon. He gave me some good homework to do. Um, we have to get our SEMP plan up and somehow they are going to find the old one for me that they hope is digital somewhere so I can cut and paste and then hand it out to the various departments to fill in their blanks okay. or cut and paste from their sections as well. Um, but for COVID, I do not have an update. Um, I did not, that is my dog, I'm sorry. I did not attend the, um, the, um, was the meeting for the, um, eat, uh, the drill. I'm sorry, I, my other job interfered with that. So That's okay. Hang on a second while I get rid of him. That's okay. I was going to say, that's your bird there, Jeff. <laughs> no, it's a squeaky yeah. toy. Yeah. <laughs> and a Jack Russell. Ah, there you go. Stop. Energetic and squeaky. Yeah, definitely to both. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's, that's actually good news then on that department, you know. No news is usually good news there. I don't know, Tom but, and, and Jeff, did you attend? Yeah, um, I think that it was uh, a fairly, I think it's fairly quiet regionally. We talked a little bit about uh, the plans for uh, flu vaccines, should they become available, applying for funds for them, um, because it sounds like they won't be free, so starting to plan for um, how, how many municipal employees we have in their families so that we can give those out and, and budgeting for how many people are in our community and um, to, to be able to purchase the flu vaccines. Do you have anything to add, Tom? Um, I, I think basically that we were going to try to do one for the area versus individual. Um, that was the other point um, that uh, um, they're trying to order some um, supplies they may need. Um, also, we're, we're talking about um, how, how you know how it would be uh, advantageous if we could run the flu clinic as soon as possible, so that if they do come out with a vaccine for COVID, that we could. Uh, scale that right up also. So I, I, it was just basically working out a lot of the um, um, 
the mechanics of the of the plane. So not 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 too. Not, also, they they talk a little bit about um, education. We're turning about I could, not a lot because Darius was not available on that day. Also, so. um, but there's you know it does the talking, and I'm sure questions that every parent and teacher and anybody that's associated with the school would have as well. So that, that's sort of a, that's a good segue into the return of college students, because uh, sounds like UMass is gearing up from what we hear. Yeah, so I think the, the chancellor announced his plans maybe about a week ago, a week and a half. Um, and the, I think the latest estimate is, is that I heard at least was about 10,000 students coming back. So I think that's significant, you know, about half of what, what usually um, for undergraduates, what are, what are usually on campus. Um, but, you know, there's, I think, a limited amount of on campus space and, and the university is prioritizing certain populations for that. Uh, and there was a survey done of students and it said, if there isn't space on campus, um, are you going to stay at home or are you going to try to come to the region? And it sounded like the, the I don't want to overstate it. The majority said that they wanted to come to the, to the region and be closer to campus, um, even if they weren't taking in-person courses. So um obviously that has an impact on the housing market uh especially if there's going to be more more students looking for housing than typically there would be because of the lack of on on campus availability um but on the flip side fewer students actually coming back for in person classes so still a little uncertain to, of how that's going to be, but obviously that's going to be impacts. Um, they're going to be UMass has, has a pretty large catchment area. Um, so how travel is going to work and um, you know, I, especially if there are people living on off campus, you know, if they're on campus, certainly there can be precautions that the university takes before right. classes start. You have to quarantine for a certain amount of time. You can do testing, but if you're just living, um, you know, in an apartment or a house, how, how would, who would do that enforcement? You know, what are the concerns? So I've reached out to the Board of Health um, and just said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What, what are some of the, the concerns you have with these, obviously people coming in from all over, it's gonna be an issue. Um, so, I think it was just to, to start the conversation. Um, yeah. and, and my plan is to reach out to some of the larger apartment complexes this week and just get a, get a sense from them of what their leases are looking like. Um, I heard from somebody who had signed a lease um, in one of the complexes in Sunderland and was asking UMass about how they get out of that. So just seeing what their... Okay. Uh, if, if they're filling up, if they're seeing fewer than normal um, or lar more than normal vacancies, things like that. And also what their concerns are with everything. And especially the, the part you mentioned about like the, you know, quarantining from, especially if like, you've got students coming from some of the, the, the cases, the states with really high risk, you know, with high caseloads now, like Florida and some of the other Southern and Western states. But um, that's, that's a little bit of a concern there, I would imagine, for folks. But and maybe we could put the, our sign to use or something. I don't know if there's anything we can put on the, the mobile sign at all at the time. But are, are there, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, are there cues yeah. we could take from other, you know, college areas, i.e., Boston, just as steps? We don't have to do everything that they do because of simply scale, but. You look at that population move-in day on you know off of Boylston and those areas are there's lots and lots and lots of people who roll in this time of year. I'd be interested to know you know how 
not just the institutions, but the municipality is gearing up uh, to be able to respond um, or to understand. I think my feeling is understanding is gonna be the most important part. Not necessarily, I'd like to have a report in January, just like the EMD gave us. There's nothing to report. Yeah, I think that's gonna be exactly. a great report. However, planning for that means you know, our heads in the sand a little bit. So yep. what, what to Jeff, to your point about reaching out to property owners and uh, having dialogue with uh, university staff, as well as, you know, our other colleges, there are plenty. And um, what does that mean for us for like the, the target, right? Area concern, area focus, area impact. If I may. Thank you. Yes. Also, um, reach out to the off-campus housing offices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's an excellent point. Yep. That's true. <clears throat> I don't so know. If I think... set, you know, restrictions on how many people per car to move in. You know, if right, or are they staggering it? Campus or. You know. Yeah, because I was wondering if they were sort of recommending staggering the arrival times of folks and things like that. Yeah, it's good. At the university, they are. Yeah, and, and, and for the students to uh, come on campus, they're also signing a contract about what they can and can't do. Really? Huh. Yeah, That's it's interesting. There, I mean, so Jeff, Jeff, I'm sure will. Jeff, and reach out to the university and ask them what they're doing. But they're they're planning on um, looking at spreading out the coming back to campus over like 10 days. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a That's it's good. a well it's much it's a much longer duration than normal. And also that because they're not giving help, they're telling people, you know, you're assigned the time and you're given a a window, a couple hour window to move your stuff in. So um, it, it is it, it's much more it's much more defined, and also the uh, contract that you have to as a student sign, you're you're giving up a lot to come back on campus. Absolutely. So I, I guess what we'll say this is just the beginning of the process as we start to figure out what we might need to do and everything. <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll be discussing this a, a lot more as we head on into the the school year or so. <clears throat> All right, anything, anything else for uh, Lori and our COVID team there, anyone? I would, I would, if I could, Mr. Chair, on this subject, yeah. it's important to keep our, our legislative delegation uh, in tune mm -hmm. to any of the changes or concerns. I think that's gonna be very important, whether it's Senator Comerford or Representative Blay, that they understand um, uh, impacts of uh, influence um, that could help the town, the whole the whole region, actually their 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 region. So, let to make sure that whatever we hear, they hear as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, get any feedback back to them so they know what's going on, <clears throat> and if they can assist us in any way, or whatever. Right, there may be some some needs that arise that they could help with. That's Again, true. I like the EMD's report, nothing to report. I want one of those in January. <laughs> However, we have to plan for it. Yep. <clears throat> There's Thank a you. lot of planning that goes behind that empty report. Yeah, exactly. It's a <laughs> lot of man hours in an empty report. <laughs> yep, that's right. All right. Thanks, Lori. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, select board updates. Do you have any uh, updates, uh, Tom? Um, we got a, uh, I have a um, FERCOG meeting on Thursday and we have a, a hopefully a, um, we have a CPC meeting on Wednesday. Um, I think everything, we're, we're still moving. We're staying, we're staying pretty consistent at the senior center. Although the, uh, I, I'm being told by the director that the uh, seniors are chomping at the bit to get back to the senior center. Uh -huh. um, and, and I think that's 
Like we all we all understand that. Um, but I, I I think that right now that um, until I would think we need to get to stage four for the governor's plan. I would think until we open it back up. But um, we we work with the the board of health and to see you know to see how they're how they recommend us moving forward. I think. Um, it is in the town of Deerfield, but I, I would ask that, I, I will ask that, that the Sundrum and Whiteley Board of Health also become involved, you know, be, you know, before we make any, um, decision. Um, it, it should be a collaborative type thing since we're coming from all the, uh, seniors from the, uh, the three different towns. Um, Jeff looks like he's been working in the town hall, getting stuff in here, and we have early voting, yeah. I guess, early voting being coming up soon, but sort of town clerk is, is working on that. So, you know, we're still, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how many things are still going on that, and, and a lot, and also the library. Um, and I see there's, I saw some, uh, People out using the ball fields not to play baseball, but other things or soccer. Other, I think, I think so, they're uh, having they're, a yoga class out there. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things that are happening. Um, I'm I'm just I'm just real. Um, I, I'm very uh, happy that Lori was able to have a, a report it as it was. And that the people of Massachusetts are taking the COVID serious, um, and and they're listening listening to the science behind it. So, and and you can agree or disagree with some of the things that have been going on, but right now I look at the results, and results are been favorable. So, um, we shall see where we go. That's about it. All right, Scott. Uh, there was a negotiation meeting last week, which we're going to talk about in executive session tonight, later at the end of the day, at the end of this meeting, uh, there was also, I think it was Thursday night, uh, I believe it was Thursday night, was a um, uh, village center uh, working group uh, meeting that was a lot of information exchange, a lot of updating that's important, uh, some delegation of responsibilities about history and bringing, we all got tasks, we'll leave it at that. We all got tasks, yeah. good tasks. Send <laughs> away with homework. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's okay. That, that's the reason for having a working group like that. There was a fair amount of discussion about that, this end of the, the uh, school in South Maine, as well as the 116 uh, interface, uh, yeah. but all of it was about uh, information gathering. So it was good. Jeff, I characterize that well. Excellent. Yes. Yep. I like how you refer to it as the 116 interface. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yep. When I when I worked in industry, they used to have this unfortunate term for um, the the first the primary investigation of an accident. And it was a machine human interface, and it was like that was always sounded so just you know cold. But yeah. you had to you had to approach it from that perspective. There you go. <clears throat> um, and again, we're on for not this week. We're taking a week off, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And we we have homework for the uh, police negotiations. And our next meeting is a week from Thursday. Okay. And last week I had uh, I was our. Uh, Union 38 Negotiation Committee, um, we had a meeting and we have a tentative agreement and I believe they'll be voting on that, I believe Thursday at the school community meeting. So once that gets voted on, we can announce that. So, um, yeah. Well, that's, that's good work and to have an agreement in this particular environment is, um, is a heavy lift on all parties. So yes, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And, and it was, it, I think it was important to get everything resolved before going into the school year because there's, it, it's just fraught with all sorts of issues and things like that and right. unknown. So the less, the less unknown we have and more resolved, I think the better, the better it was. So <clears throat> smart. So we'll, uh, 
we'll be announcing that, I guess, once, once that's fully voted on. <clears throat> and now we turn it over to the exciting town administrator part of our scheduled program. Sure. So um, the Council on Aging met last week um, and uh, the, a couple things that I just want to mention, um, they were, um, sorry, I'm going to pull up my notes so I get it right. Um, there's a program called Valley Neighbors, which is, they were hoping to launch this summer, but with everything going on, it's looking more like fall. Um, and that's going to include Waitley and Deerfield as well as Sunderland. And basically they, they look for volunteers um, and they can provide services for seniors, um, rides to doctor's appointments, pick up food, get the mail, wellness checks, um, technical services. All the volunteers are vetted and trained and insured. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, and again, ho they're hoping to get up and running by the fall, um, but just another resource uh, for elders in the community. Um, and we talked about how we could help spread the word and, and not just about um, Valley Neighbors, but about all the resources available to seniors and w what sort of avenues we can use, um, website links, you know, we talked about how to communicate to seniors and what the best approaches are and um, the and then the other the other big thing that we had talked about was applying to be an age friendly community and that's an AARP designation and it requires a letter of, um, of support I think from the, the select board so look stay tuned for more information on that as I gather it and I'll put it in a future packet. But I think that, um, you know, I just briefly went on the website. I think Deerfield and I, and Northampton and maybe Greenfield are, are all designated communities. Hmm. Um, okay. And I think it makes you eligible for grants. And um, so I'll look more into it and I'll, I'll present more information, but just trying to put that on your radar. So if I could, Mr. Chair, recognizing that yeah. we just did an ADA survey last year completed with some uh, tasks completed subsequently, is there any, um, it's probably too early to tell, but getting that designation, does that help with points in the grant program or anything like that? Well, that's a good question. Can't hurt, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's probably overlap. Right. Yep. So again, that survey by the COG and, and the impacts in the buildings is, is helpful. Uh, it gives us guidance going forward. Uh, and if this adoption helps us, then, then great. Let's tie them together. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so there was also, um, we were, Sunderland was designated as a housing choice community. We had applied for that a couple months ago and received the official designation. Uh, there is, a grant of up to $250,000 for um, only housing choice communities. So I have to look into exactly what that grant can be used for and then mm -hmm. hopefully uh, apply and be successful. Um, but, and the, the reason for that was because we increased housing production uh, a certain percentage within a period of time um, and uh, we're a community choice, uh, community compact participant. Um, and so I thought that hmm. was some good news that I wanted to share. Um, hmm. Yeah, you can see the connection now with a lot of the different grant programs and being, you know, a community compact, for instance, like you were mentioning, and how that benefits other things. So there's, there's definitely a lot of tie-ins there, which is good. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, oh, uh, so the, since we, the state entered phase three and limited um, recreational activities can happen with certain guidelines, um, the recreation coordinator um, is, is going to be holding small socially distanced uh, 
workshops for softball yep. and t-ball limited size um, we talked through all the all the precautions all the cleaning of equipment that, that would be shared how they would um, distance themselves and not share snacks or water or things like that um, so he's reaching out and I think the even though you can have now groups larger than 10 with two coaches he felt that that was a good size um it was smart to yeah. keep it that way especially you know we're seeing surges in other places and should that happen um not wanted to, and by the way he's offering this for free so if there are people out there with younger children um looking for something for them to do it i want to say it's a half day um and then he's I think he's having a morning session and an afternoon session with some time so that there isn't conflicts with drop off and pick up and a lot of overlap. Okay, so that really, makes sense. that's good. Has really thought uh, thought it through about how to do it, and I I thought it was a great offering and went along with the idea that we did want people to use our you know, playground and parks, just do it in a responsible manner. And I think that um, he, he had a good plan for that. So. I saw the email on that. Is he is he planning on getting something up on the website too, so folks can see that? I think that would be that would yeah. be a good thing to do. A great point. Uh huh. <clears throat> you may know, put a, a habit on his page, but then if I'm you know link in the news section to it or something. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Um, and um, the only. Other thing that, that I wanted, one of the, um, Scott had, had mentioned the Village Center Committee and, and Mass Dot and staying involved. Did we want to, uh, a few months ago, we you sent a letter to Mass Dot wanting to stay involved in the intersection discussions. Did we yes. want to make an affirmative date to invite them to a future meeting um, and, and say, we would, you know, there's a lot going on. North Main Street is coming, you know, entering the final phases. Um, we want to talk about what's going on in the intersection. Um, one of the things that, that uh, Lauren Starr and I had done was reach out to get, I think it was the Adopt a Highway program was the official ones for the gardens and we haven't heard back. Um, and just sort of do, do a, general Sunderland mass dot highway check-in and it's a good a idea preferred date yes do mm. you think in, in this season uh, that we should be thinking about you know post post whatever it is Labor Day Right. Yeah, they have they have a season back. as well. Everybody's got a vacation right. season. It's uh, it's always been difficult. It has, in my experience, been difficult to host a big big um, hoo ha with a lot yep. of different parties in the summer. Yep, you're definitely right about that. And, and who knows? Maybe maybe it's maybe it's the exact opposite of them. Maybe they want to do these meetings. But my my experience is that people are out and about. Tom, what do you think? Uh I'm not sure, Scott. I, this one, I, I really don't have that, that opinion on that one. Okay. Jeff, you know, in, invite them. Put out three or four dates that are scheduled for us, and we can invite the public. But I would think we want to give a, you know, a solid, a solid three to four weeks notice before asking them to come right. so that they're actually prepared. And that would be with some questions as well as, you know, the last time they were here, they, they were very good about you know, keeping notes and having presentation and keeping us up to date. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good point about the timing too. Cause as I recall with the North main street where we had two very different groups of folks and opinions at two different meetings and right. you know, the more you can get together in one meeting, it can be a lot more productive. Good point <clears throat> for everybody. Yep. So that's that's what I had for for the updates. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. All right. And then next under our new business section, we've got a reappoint of an appointment of Mike Skibiski to the Capital Planning, excuse me, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. 
Sorry, Mr. Chair. Right. Uh, before we move yeah. on, do, do we want to talk mm -hmm. about the, uh, and looking at the agenda, I realized this had dropped off under old business, but um, county administrator goals and evaluation or next meeting? Um, we can, why don't we do that for next meeting since we didn't have it on here and then we okay. can, yeah. All right. Already starting the agenda for the next meeting. So, all right. So we've got. Um, it's not on this particular, but I remember seeing that in the last week's packet. Um, do we have a motion to appoint Mike to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee? Motion. All right. No, I'll second. Second. All, second. Right. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, three to zero on that one. <coughs> and then, we're, then we have also here, we have a reappointment for the Zoning Board of Appeals for Jim Bernotis and Jim Williams Jr. And then we have the appointment of reappointment with associate members, Stephen Schneider, Rock Warner, and Hollis Graves. Well, these are all, all ZBA, the first two as members, and the final three as associates. Associates, correct. Yeah. And I heard, I think I heard Tom. Yep. Motion. Motion. Second. We have a, all those in favor for the appointments of the primary and the associate members? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on the reappointments. <clears throat> and now I see we have our reschedule of our poll hearing, Jeff, on here. Yes. So uh, I reached out to Eversource. Um, there was a, a miscommunication at the last on, on the 29th. Um, and I asked them about August 10th and they were available and that would give them enough time to do the outreach to abutters and give us enough time yep. to uh, re-advertise for that. So I just wanted to confirm that none of you had uh, concerns with rescheduling that for August 10th. I don't think, I don't think I have any issues at all. No, I think that's, yeah, let's go ahead and schedule yeah. that. Yeah. Get that taken care of. And then our last regular item, which is also coincidentally the fattest part of our paperwork file here, the, <laughs> the park grant application. <clears throat> what, uh, what bits of excitement do you have for us on that, Jeff? Um, it was similar to what was discussed two weeks ago at, at the public yeah. meeting. I think that, um, you know, the, the town's contribution to the park grant, uh, it, it's a matching grant. They reimburse up to, I think, 68% for Sunderland. Um, yeah. The town's investment would really be sort of the kayak kiosk, storage for kayaks. Um, it would also house a, uh, the baseball shed, um, a new baseball yeah. shed, uh, and replace the uh, current rec shed um, and then what we'd be applying for park grants for would be to create uh, an ADA accessible sidewalk along the boat ramp um, to um, look at improvements to the soccer field specifically trying to dig a, a well and put a pump in for irrigation um, yes. and then the Third thing would be to make the restrooms there ADA accessible. And then depending on how the funding works out and the bids come in, um, maybe make it a little bit more accessible to the dugouts, uh, just sort of make the whole baseball yeah. field accessible. Um, what we heard was a desire for more plantings as well, um, shade trees and similar things so we tried to incorporate more plantings in the plan based on that discussion um yeah. unfortunately you know the other major uh idea that came up was sort of a ch children's play area and right. that would 
be a, a significant expense as was discussed last week there's not a whole lot of reusable equipment everything would have to be new and right. um, either there would have to be expensive ground cover uh, for accessibility issues and, and safety issues or there would have to be sort of a significant maintenance plan if we went with wood chips and that has uh, right. ongoing costs as well so um, unfortunately it, it did not make it into this application but I think it's still an idea that has merit and that, that a lot of people support so okay <clears throat> so we can tackle that in a later phase yeah there are two actions that I would or I think two votes that I would ask the board to take um, and they're in your packet right. and I will actually pull them up on screen Okay, good. Um, Come to me. So we can go off of that. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think so we've got one certificate of vote that would be from our last meeting, right? Yes, that was for the conservation restriction. Yep. And then there's going to be a certificate of vote uh, to authorize the chair to file the park grant. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and then there is a resolution to accept grants from EEA. Okay. Huh. And these were all part of the application um, last Good. time around in 2017. I'll make the motion to authorize the chair File the act, file the parkland acquisitions and renovations for committee and or park as it's known grant program application for FY 2021. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on that one. And then what was our second one? The Resol adopt the resolution. Resolution. Right. We have a motion for resolution adoption for the park grant. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that. But that should take care of our housekeeping there, all right, Jeff? Yes, sir. It just all means right. more paperwork and meeting yeah. time and <laughs> follow up yep. and phone calls and Exactly. It's a simple vote that carry that careens out of control. And lots of files on your hard drive, Jeff. And lots of files, exactly. Good point. <laughs> files and files. All right. Anything else um, we need to discuss on the park grant tonight, Jeff? Um, I don't think so. There, there's a, a cover letter in the signature uh, folder for, for the chair. Um, and I'm just finalizing two last pieces. Um, it's due Wednesday by 3 p.m., so I'll be overnighting it. Um, okay. <laughs> <Last> <laughs> Running down to that FedEx thing. <laughs> exactly. Or I'll be driving to Boston on Wednesday. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have to drive out there. Yeah. Um, it, what's the timeline then for hearing about that? Did... That is a good question. I think that... Um, my re my recollection was, I think we're saying late fall, early winter. Okay, because I was thinking like October, November or something at least. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, that'll be, well, I'll be waiting with bated breath. Yeah. On the edge of our park benches. <clears throat> right. Yeah. All right. Um, Oh, you know, what we didn't have on the agenda is a uh, public comment section. I just noticed we don't have that on there. Uh, it's above new business. Did I miss it? Yes, there it is. I'm sorry. That was my, I missed it. Um, do we have any public comments before we move on to uh, anything else? John? Nothing critical, but um, speaking of park grants, um, I did make sure uh, both the Riverside Park itself and the boat launch are now on Google. Um, so those are searchable oh, and findable now. Uh, and I do have an email out to the friends um, to see if we can grab some some trail maps so we can get those marked on there as well. Uh, a little nice. better and maybe some additional images um, of the, uh, the new spaces there. So for whatever that's Great, worth. Thanks. 
they're they're on uh, there you now. know <laughs> somebody somebody can find it on google that's always yeah. good you know yeah. So it'll probably take another year before it gets to Apple Maps, but you know. Well, that's a separate problem. I can't edit that. I can edit Google. I can't edit. That. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They're gonna have to do that. All right. Thanks. There you go. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> Pardon my camera here while I move around. So our last item is an update on the police negotiations, in which we'll be going into executive session. And uh, just as an update, we'll be coming back to regular session only to adjourn. There'll be no new business conducted. And we'll be going uh, to executive session for under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A. And we'll be going for item number two to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Just to clarify, I yeah. think that's section yes. three. Paragraph three. 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 Yeah. Oh, you're, okay, three. All right, so I'll, I'll read that. It's to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares. I want to make sure that we're dotting all our I'm uh, crossing all our T's there. <clears throat> so for this, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Right. I'll second. This is a roll right. call vote. That's correct. Uh, Mr. Bergeron. Aye. Uh, Mr. Putin Kevitz. Aye. And Mr. Pierce. Aye. All right. And we'll be adjourning into uh, executive session will be coming back to a joint excuse me and going to executive session coming back to the meeting and we'll pop back on here briefly and uh adjourn the meeting all right welcome back uh, and now we're actually going to vote to adjourn our meeting now that we're done with the executive session like we said we come back and then strictly to adjourn the meeting is there a motion to adjourn our select board meeting motion second all right. All those in favor for German? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And our next meeting will be in two weeks.